Mod Squad is a groundbreaking television series from 1968 that follows three young outsiders recruited by the police to work undercover. They're not your typical officers and they use their unique perspectives to solve crimes. The show is known for its forward-thinking portrayal of cultural issues in its dynamic trio Pete, Link, and Julie. As you watch, you'll discover many surprising facts about the show. Did you know that the cast performed many of their own stunts? Or that the show addressed topics that were considered taboo at the time? These are just a few tidbits that make Mod Squad a fascinating watch. I first encountered Mod Squad years after its original airing, and it was immediately clear why it left a lasting impression on viewers. Its blend of drama and action, along with its social commentary, was ahead of its time. Now, we're curious about your connection to Mod Squad. What's your most memorable moment or personal story related to the show? Your experiences add to the rich history of this series, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Keep watching for more insights and stories that will surprise, entertain, and maybe even move you. These are the two new guys? Uh, yeah, uh, friends of Jerry's. The TV series Mod Squad, which started in 1968, was a groundbreaking show for its time. It was one of the first to feature a diverse cast, with three young characters from different backgrounds working together as undercover cops. The show tackled social issues that were relevant then and are still discussed today like race, class, and justice. This approach to storytelling and the way it presented its characters helped change how TV shows were made. It showed that audiences were ready for more realistic and serious topics in their entertainment. The series also inspired future TV shows to include more diverse casts and address important social issues. Mod Squad remains significant today because it reminds us of the progress made in television and the work still left to do in terms of equality and representation. Distinct among his peers, Michael Cole was the sole main cast member of the show who originated outside of New York City. His personal life intertwined with the entertainment industry as well, through his marriage to Paula Kelly Jr., whose parents were part of the Modern Heirs. Together, they welcomed their daughter, Jennifer Holly Cole, into the world in 1972. At the time the show first aired, the cast brought diverse experiences and youthfulness to the screen, with Williams at 29, Cole at 23, and Lipton at just 22 years old. Yeah. I read in the papers where they had a mystery witness. What's the deal? In the show that broke new ground in the late 1960s, Clarence Williams' Roman III, Michael Cole, and Ty Andrews were the steadfast trio appearing in all episodes, with Peggy Lipton missing only two. Lipton left a lasting impression as Julie Barnes, a role that became synonymous with her name. Edward Asner, known for his extensive network of friends including Mary Tyler Moore and Betty White also contributed to the series, bringing his own unique presence to the screen. I wasn't living here alone. <laughs> I would say that is friendly. Super friendly. In a unique collaboration with the automotive industry, the show featured vehicles supplied by the Chrysler Corporation, integrating sleek designs that matched the show's aesthetic. Drawing from real-life experiences, Buddy Ruskin, a former police officer, infused the narrative with authenticity, basing it on his time with the Special Youth Squad in Los Angeles. A signature visual element was established with each episode's conclusion, where viewers would see the protagonists walk away together, symbolizing their unity and the end of their latest adventure. Loved her, didn't we? Oh, and where are those pictures, Robbie? In the landscape of television, certain shows become notable for their cultural impact. One such series, which aired in the late 1960s, became a subject of satire in Mad Magazine, earning the playful moniker Odd Squad. Among the cast, Michael Cole stood out for his portrayal of Pete Cochran, a role that left a lasting impression on audiences. Behind the scenes, Clarence Williams III shared insights into the show's production during an interview with Terry Gross on Fresh Air. He humorously noted the recurring plot devices used when the writers faced challenges, such as the police commissioner's complaints about the young protagonist, which became a staple storyline. Additionally, budget constraints often led to episodes being filmed on the studio lot, disguised as various behind-the-scenes workers, to solve a murder without the need for location shoots. These anecdotes reveal the practicalities of television production and the creative solutions employed to keep the show within budget. Very good, Mr. Murray. Thank you, Kagawa. Keep them at it. 
In the landscape of television history, the loss of Clarence Williams III marked the end of an era, leaving Michael Cole as the sole remaining member of the original team. Their iconic vehicle, the Woody, met its demise in a blaze immortalized by Link's farewell words. Years later, the narrative continued with a wealthy Pete acquiring a similar car, symbolizing a new chapter for the trio. Meanwhile, Peggy Lipton's legacy lived on through her daughter Rashida Jones, who worked on the very stage where her mother once starred. These threads weave together the past and present, highlighting the enduring connections and transformations within the industry. So thanks, thanks for that. The passing of Clarence Williams III marked the end of an era, leaving Michael Cole as the sole remaining member of the original team. Their legacy continued to influence future generations, as evidenced by Peggy Lipton's role in Twin Peaks, a series that also featured a group of young detectives. Williams III himself joined the cast, bridging the gap between the two series and highlighting the lasting appeal of the original show's concept. He was sweating and very nervous, and I'm betting it wasn't all the Hong Kong flu. Captain, if you couldn't get anything. Amid the backdrop of the late 1960s, a show emerged that broke many of television's traditional molds. It featured a trio of young undercover detectives, each with a troubled past, who formed a bond while fighting crime. Tragically, one of the lead actors, Michael Cole, who played Pete Cochran, endured a severe personal crisis during the show's run. Struggling with substance abuse, his situation mirrored the societal issues the series often tackled, highlighting the harsh realities behind the era's counterculture movement. The soft-screen struggle cast a shadow over the series, reminding viewers that the glossy veneer of television often belies the real human challenges faced by its stars. We'll just be the two of us together. Just him and me.